In this video presentation, we will discuss about the extraction of the bacterial genomic DNA using phenol chloroform method. The isolation and purification of DNA from the cells is one of the most routinely used protocol in molecular biology for conducting molecular based diagnosis. This is an overview on nucleic acid extraction or isolation. The first step is cell lysis. Initially, the cell membranes must be broken in order to release the cellular contents using sodium dodecyl sulfate, protease K enzyme. The second step is extraction of nucleic acid. Once the cell content is obtained, separation of nucleic acid from the cellular proteins and lipids is carried out using phenyl chloroform mixture. The third step is precipitation. Following separation, the nucleic acid is precipitated by using cold absolute ethanol or isopropanol. The fourth step is washing. To ensure the purity and quality of the nucleic acid, the precipitated nucleic acid is washed once or twice with the 70% ethanol. Then the final step, resuspending. In this, the washed and precipitated nucleic acid is resuspended in TRI-CDT a buffer for storage purpose, until further use. Isolation of Genomic DNA from E. coli Bacterial Cells Preparation of Sample First the bacterial colony is inoculated into the bacterial broth. The organism to be used, should be grown in a favorable medium at an optimal temperature, and should be harvested in, late log, to early stationary phase, for maximum yield. Following incubation, from the overnight bacterial culture, the bacterial cells are pelleted, by low-speed centrifugation for 10 minutes. Discard the supernatant. This cell pellet is resuspended in 900 microliter of TRI-CDT a buffer by gentle mixing. The first step is cell lysis. 100 microliter of 10% SDS and 5 microliter of protonase K is added to the resuspended sample. SDS is a detergent, used to break the cell membrane. Protonase K enzyme is used to degrade the proteins, in the disrupted cell extract. This mixture is mixed well, and incubated at 37 degrees Celsius in an incubator for 1 hour, for cell lysis. Following cell lysis, separate the cellular contents, that is cell extract by centrifugation, to remove the cell debris. Step 2. Extraction or separation of DNA. To the cell extract, add 1 ml of phenyl chloroform mixture, whose pH is 7 to 8. Mix well by inverting and incubated room temperature for 5 minutes. Phenol and chloroform are used to denature and separate proteins from DNA. Following incubation, centrifuge the mixture at high speed, that is 10,000 RPM for 10 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius. After centrifugation, you can observe the phase separation. Nucleic acids that is DNA and RNA stays in the aqueous phase. But the cellular proteins, and lipids settle in the organic phase. In phenol chloroform mixture, the pH is very important for phase separation of nucleic acid. For RNA separation, the pH is kept around 4, that is acidic pH, which retains the RNA in the aqueous phase preferentially. For DNA separation, the pH is usually 7 to 8, which retains all the nucleic acids, that is DNA and RNA in the aqueous phase. Following phase separation, collect the aqueous phase, that is the supernatant, in a fresh tube. RNA can be broken down by adding an RNA enzyme, to the collected aqueous phase. Step 3. Precipitation of DNA, by using cold absolute ethanol or isopropanol. Generally, the DNA is insoluble in these alcohols. So they will aggregate together, giving a pellet upon centrifugation. Precipitation of DNA can be improved by adding, sodium acetate. So, in this step, first add, 100 microliter of 5 molar sodium acetate, to the supernatant and is mixed gently. Then, add 2 ml of isopropanol, and mix gently by inversion. After mixing, centrifuge at 5000 rpm for 10 minutes, to precipitate the DNA. Following precipitation, discard the supernatant. Step 4. Washing of DNA, using 70% ethanol. This step ensures the purity and quality of the nucleic acid. Add 1 ml of 70% ethanol and mix gently by inversion. Then, centrifuge at 5000 rpm for 10 minutes, to precipitate the DNA. Following precipitation, discard the supernatant. Washing step can be repeated once or twice, to ensure the purity and quality of the nucleic acid. Later, after discarding the ethanol supernatant, air dry for 5 minutes. Last step. Resuspending of nucleic acid with a buffer. In this, the washed, precipitated, air dried nucleic acid is resuspended in TRI-CDT a buffer, 
for storage purpose, until further use. Precautions to be taken. DNA's free plastic wares, and reagents should be used. Quantitation and purity of the DNA. That is, to find out the concentration, and the purity of the DNA sample, the sample of DNA has to be ran through the, UV spectrophotometer, which is purely based on Bear Lambert's law. In this, optical density, or absorbance value at 260 nanometer, and 280 nanometer are measured. Both the reading, are used to calculate the concentration, and the purity of the DNA sample. The purity of nucleic acid, can be determined by calculating the ratio of, OD value at 260 nanometer, divided by, OD value at 280 nanometer for the DNA sample. If the ratio is between 1.8 to 2, then it is accepted as, pure, or clean DNA. If the ratio is less than 1.8, or, more than 2, then it indicates the presence of protein contamination, or phenol contamination, or other contaminants. In that case, phase separation using phenol coroform step, or washing step can be repeated with the sample. Quantitation of the DNA Use the following formula to determine the concentration of DNA. Total DNA is equal to OD value at 260 nanometer, into 50 into Dilution factor. 50 is a standard for double-stranded DNA, which is shown below. For qualitative analysis, run the DNA sample through the agarose gel electrophoresis to visualize the DNA bands. With this we are coming to the end of DNA isolation using phenyl chloroform method. In next video presentation we will discuss on the RNA isolation. Hope the lecture is informative and useful. Thank you.